Brendan Schaub and Brian Callan had John Crisp on their podcast or John Crisps or Crisp or however he pronounce it, he pronounce it right and this guy is some sort of Christian comedian who got caught up in some cancel culture stuff which is a bit dumb to be honest because I think for the most part he's a Christian clean comic and he basically got caught up because he was being too horny and trying to chat up married women and obviously not abiding by one of the rules of the Bible by not having sex before marriage because he was having plenty of it by all accounts and clearly living a playboy bachelor life when he's meant to be a Christian which is obviously not a great way to go about things so that's why maybe he got a lot of pushback but overall reading some of the notes and the stories about it his kind of greatest crime was obviously trying to get and hook up with women that are already married especially married women in his own church so it's a bit scandalous but it's nothing crazy in terms of cancellation but obviously during that whole fur the furrow when it comes to flipping cancelling people during me too he was kind of lopped, lumped into it and he went through a pretty dark period where you know his life was looking kind of bleak he had to go to rehab all this sort of good stuff and I guess now he's become a friend of the fire and the kid i don't know how personally because i feel like he's in a completely different orbit to those type of dudes and like i said i don't necessarily think his crime was that bad but because the fire and the kid has turned into the home of cancelled comics and it's become a safe space for these people he decided to go on there and essentially kind of you know speak his piece and you know do his thing and there's an interesting part of this pod talk about cancellation and he talks about how hard it was for him and how dark of a place he was in and brian keller speaks about his issues that he went through with his you know r word allegations and accusations and whatnot and then brendan goes on a really weird unhinged rant where he feels like he's crying but it feels like it's crocodile tears because we saw him cry right? when he when Chris Alia got cancelled. We saw him sobbing when he, you know, recorded a video of his friends thanking him for uploading a YouTube video. We saw how much he was sobbing. But in this one, it was sort of like a weird crocodile tear kind of like... Mm -hmm like a whimper so it's really strange unhinged rant he went on that i'm gonna play for you but it's very very bizarre the whole thing and hopefully we can analyze and break it down on the other end and you, uh, uh like encouragement uh, oh because gotcha. everybody had been to the bottom did you yeah. get they my all been to the bottom or did, did i what did you get you my get, pics? You, get yeah. Yeah. you get something because and, and now like and i was in rehab and sam Comedy. hunt which is a, a buddy of ours, he's a country singer. Great country. Oh, One of the got best. A, got One a DUI. Favorite. Got a DUI. And I go, we got to talk to him. We got to find him. We got to find him and we got to tell him to stay on earth yeah just stay just because yes. it's it, yes. it's it, when i was at the bottom everybody knew they go also imagine being a country music star or country or a christian country music act and you legitimately think your world is over because you get a dui it's incredible isn't it like the the re, the worlds and the reality is that different people live in where legitimately you think getting a dui is the end of your life to the point where you can't show your face around town anymore crazy and these guys have got crazy accusations around them and they're flipping happy go lucky and everything is normal but a guy gets a DUI and he legitimately thinks the end of the world different rules different strokes I know what that feeling is and I'm and I'm also 15 years or 10 years or three years I yeah, mean dude better they and they go I, oh I'm, I'm compelled keep fighting to find where yeah. this guy is on this planet and there was like my sister was like getting notes from friends that were like co-workers they were like if this don't make me cry they go if you know John tell find him yeah and tell him yeah and that saved my whole life yeah and now all i want to do because, is do because that. you because you were helping somebody else yes and that that's what's amazing here's here's the other thing that they have found let forget religion even but like and i appreciate that story because psychologically you're he's so small what's Bre what's brendan crying for i feel like the whole crying thing about cancellation or cancel culture must be because you've got your own skeletons in the closet i don't get the whole like sobbing about people being ripped to pieces because of their you know indiscretions with the opposite sex if you don't have any crazy stuff in your closet why are you so emotional i get it being annoying and you have to kind of fight your case and you might get labeled to a creep but if you didn't do anything wrong you can just explain yourself people might not believe you but you can just clearly logically rationally without any theatrics explain your side of the story people need to take it or they don't and you just move on but all this i'm gonna be the soldier against cancel culture and we're gonna fight against this tyrannical rule or these feminist rights like it's not that big of a deal like it's annoying like i said don't get me wrong there's no due process and it feels like there is no real redemption story or redemption path or a way to come back from these sort of things it feels like when you do get cancelled for these indiscretions with opposite sex it's like your career is done i understand that side of things but let's be real if you honestly didn't do anything you should be able to bounce back you might have a time of like time out where you have to kind of sit on the sidelines that can be annoying especially if you're a sociopath if you're a narcissist if you enjoy the limelight to take some time away with that's being sort of enforced on you is a bit hard to take cool but let's relax do you know what i mean let's relax
let's relax. If you're not an apps, if you're not a legit, you know, SA or, you know, whatever else they, they call them or an R word, you should be fine. Just explain your side of the story. Your fans will support you or they won't. And then you keep it moving. It's not that big of a deal, guys. Like, let's not start crying and sobbing as if you're legitimately, you know, suffering in any way, shape or form because you're not. You got embarrassed. You got shamed online or something. You got some mean messages and emails, but let's relax, right? Stiff up a lip please you're way happier when you stop thinking about yourself oh way happier. the other thing yeah. i learned is that i swear to god man it rewired my brain because i just got i stopped worrying about myself a lot of times yeah i was like yeah, i was like I, I said to my father one time I, and i really meant it i go imagine I'm not at 50 years old you find you finally discover that you're not the center of the universe anymore 50 years old with two kids a wife and another wife and another kid and you only realize then that you're not the center of the earth that's why these guys are fundamentally broken as people legitimately to the same extent i say maybe as djs there's something a bit that's why you shouldn't get too close just admire from afar watch a special keep it moving and dust but the idea these people are normal or have any kind of appeal or any kind of um intrigue to regular normal people shouldn't ever cross your mind they live in an entire alternate universe this man is legitimately 50 years old and you only realized just the other day because he got cancelled that he's not the center of the universe crazy I'm not afraid to die me neither I, and and he said uh, he, he got really nervous i go i'm not saying i'm suicidal yep. know this about me i'm not afraid to fucking die nah, i either. used to be afraid I, i'm still afraid okay i'm <laughs> yeah. not you know but, but you know what i'm saying is like you get you get brave. Yeah. who's gonna kill you brother relax you're not in you're not in fucking seal team or anything do you know what i mean like who's gonna kill you alice hamilton like chill out brother you're fine you're gonna get some mean tweets people are gonna take the piss out of you in your comments you could just block and delete them it's not that difficult make your page private stay off social stay off social media these guys man i'm not afraid to die what <laughs> how about some compassion to your alleged victims isn't that gonna be something that could ingratiate yourself to people again but yeah let's not talk about that but 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 what really helped me too was listening to jordan peterson's uh, lectures on the bible yeah and about how anytime you are cast into the desert you got to still have faith and when you don't yeah. have faith that's what it is so the metaphors in the bible the metaphors for anybody niggas get accused of being an r word and suddenly they find christ right <laughs> <laughs> suddenly they know who jesus is right niggas gets a couple of our word charges and suddenly they start praying and getting on their knees and actually humbling themselves <laughs> before you were your own god and now suddenly you get cancelled and suddenly you're seeking god's help get out of here man and anybody who i've admired has come up against themselves and the faced darkness i don't think anybody survived yeah. i don't think anybody escaped you're li alive long and if you're really trying for something i don't think anybody escapes the the chaos the flood nah, I so. and loss yeah. i don't we also don't respect those people like I hate, I hate this narrative that Brendan always says, fucking narrative. I hate this narrative that they're trying to paint that only people who try to do something, who put themselves out there have to face these trials and tribulations. Everybody goes through these things. Everybody in regular life, you go through cheating scandals, you know, this, um, what you call it? Uh, corruption, uh, friction in the family, whatever, whatever marital affair you've been going through. Maybe it's not, it's not, maybe it's not the extent of being, you know, accused of being an R word, but there are occasions you know if you get tested, everyone gets tested, but I love how they make their test to be the most special test. You no, know, the way you get tested as a content creator, as a comedian, as a influential person, as a famous person is completely different to regular people. No, it isn't. For the most part, if you're a good guy or a good girl, you'll be okay. A point in, you know, a point, I always like to raise is the Justin Bieber one the one where those two random girls on social media accused him of doing some untoward stuff to them and because you know he's young and because he's been on social media forever he fortunately enough had a track record of images and DMs and stuff that he could pull from that legitimately kind of broke down and sort of dismissed their entire story and what they were trying to put out there but for the most part there's not really been many stories of him being a douche to women or anything in general so it's difficult to really have that story have any sense of validity the problem these guys have is that they've got such a long track record of the things they've said being quite dicey dicey and obviously they've got people they've encountered in real life who can maybe um what's that thing called that can maybe vali uh, validate some of the claims that are out there that can maybe lend credence to it some stories from other people that they've mentioned so that's the issue they have it's sort of like your actions and your words are kind of catching up to each other and obviously these whole things happening the world's changing society's moving forward people are trying to fight back into certain things and in general if you think about it really if you really get deep into into the granular side of things that whole me too thing for the most part is really a reaction to the fact that the judicial system for the most part doesn't necessarily 
necessarily punish our words and essays for the most part you don't get punished it's hard to really and the conviction rate for flipping our word is really 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 low it's very difficult to get somebody you know that has committed that act to actually serve any substantial time in prison let alone people that do stuff to kids so the judicial system is completely broken and doesn't necessarily help women when it comes to that sort of thing so i feel like that me too thing was a natural reaction like they have to they wanted to fight back okay cool we've had enough we have to do something we have to stand for something something these guys have to face some level of consequence and obviously it got a bit crazy and some people were punished who probably shouldn't have in a crossfire i understand this but let's relax let's not start crying and also if you're actually a good person can explain yourself can maybe take a time out and come back later it's not that big of a deal but they're trying to make it seem as if they're just minding their business looking after their kids driving their fancy cars and then suddenly they get hit with something out of the blue no there is some truth to what people are saying maybe not all of it is true but it does come from some sort of real place but they don't want even want to acknowledge that it's infuriating